That was a huge hit back in 1957, and believe it or not, its lyrics, considered way too suggestive in those days, got it banned in Boston. It was the very first success for what would become one of the biggest acts in music. Rock and roll pioneers, the Everly Brothers. With John Blackstone, we take note. In 1957, they were two kids from Tennessee. What is your name? Don Everly, age 20. Unaccustomed to being on television. How about you? What's your name? Bill Everly, and I'm 18 years old. But they had a hit. Bye bye, love. Bye bye, happy. The Everly brothers were young, and so was rock and roll. I think I have a good one. Bye bye. Bye bye, love. Bye bye, sweet caress. Hello, happiness. I feel like I've moved on. Rock and roll had a place where it started. That's a different conversation mm -hmm. for a lot of mm -hmm. people. Well, what do you mean? I'm like, I mean, it, it didn't exist. There, there was no rock and roll, and then there was rock and roll. We discover so much stuff about our parents. That, for Jason Everly, you know, Phil's just, son, and his God, cousin Stacy Everly, Dawn's daughter, the history of rock and roll is family history. Phil died in 2014 and Dawn in 2021. Now, the next generation has assembled a new album of remastered tracks. Lovers, love scars, love wounds, and Mars. It's not a greatest hits album. I mean, we just found record after record after record and different, these little, you hadn't heard these songs before. So it was just, it was fascinating. Because, you know, we, the usual suspects we'd always heard, you know? Like yeah. everybody else. Yeah, like everybody else, right? Yeah. And then, you know, we see, oh, wow, they recorded that? How interesting. Are there particular ones that stand out to you? I think my favorite is uh, Gone, Gone, Gone. Gone, Gone, Gone. Really gone. Down. Down. The album was produced by someone who also knows what it's like to be the child of a rock star. I'm so honored that to see you holding it. Adria Petty, daughter of Tom Petty. I'm a, a rabid Everly Brothers fan, and I even named my daughter Everly with my dad's urging. I am one of those people. Tom Petty died in 2017, but he passed on to Adria his respect for the Everly Brothers. I mean, there would be no Crosby, Stills and Nash. There'd be no Beatles. John and Paul used to play Don and Phil when they tried to figure out their arrangements. I mean, when someone asked me why I was doing this, I was like, because Dad wouldn't have existed without them. In 1986, when the brothers got their star on Hollywood's Walk of Fame, Tom Petty was there. So many people are, are credited with uh, influencing the rock era, or, or, but these guys really did. Uh, more so than, than anyone I can think of, just about. When they went into the studio to record, say, Bye Bye Love, it started out country, and it came out a rock and roll classic, and it blew everybody's mind. Here's a microphone right up here. Right. Right. Dawn and Phil grew up performing on country radio with their parents, Ike and Margaret. We've been sweet for so long. Dawn is just 13, singing on this rare 1950 recording from an Iowa station. Just a few years later, the brothers headed to Nashville. Straight from Nashville, Tennessee, the Everly Brothers. Ah! Wake up, Lizzie, wake up. Home wake movies up. the family recently discovered have never before been seen in public. They show Phil and Dawn enjoying the fruit of their early success. Ooh. The Everly songs of teenage love and teenage angst somehow became more poignant with their brotherly harmony. Dream, dream, dream when I want you In my arms when I want you and By 1960, they were so popular that Warner Brothers signed them to a record-breaking contract. The biggest recording contract in music history at the time, a million dollars, is uh, that was crazy talk. We would like to do a more recent record. We do hope you enjoy one called Kathy's Clown. 
Kathy's Clown became the Everly's biggest selling record ever. Don't want your love anymore. Don't want your But by 1964, their sales were dwindling. And the things changed. You know, the, the Beatles came along and music evolved and exploded again in a whole new way. The Everly Brothers continued to tour until 1973, when it all ended suddenly, right in the middle of a show. Your father throws down the guitar? He does, yeah, that was, yeah, he was, um, he I mean, enough. yeah, had enough that day. Uh, I mean, in reality, um, they're, they're real brothers. They reunited 10 years later, and as Phil Everly put it, their bond remained. Don't take this heaven from because you're brothers, you, you sing a certain way together, and you have a certain background that uh, works and meshes together. Uh, but it's because we're brothers that we're back together. Mm -hmm. Not because we make music, but because we're brothers. Don and Phil. As something of a coda to their career, in 2003, they performed with another reunited duo, Simon and Garfunkel. I think it was two people who could actually understand what they had been through too, because it's two guys that sang so closely together as mm -hmm. well, like brothers, and had their ups and downs as well, yeah. you know, through the years. In their early years, as Don Everly once noted, rock music was considered a passing fad. Pop music is, is a fickle mistress, and uh, tastes change, and they come and go, but tell you what, rock and roll lasted, and uh, that was the thing they were telling us all along, it's never going to last, it's never going to last. But it's still here, and the music of the Everly Brothers still rocks. Wake up, Susie, Nearly seven decades later. Wake up, 